Hey y'all, it's Jennifer. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am coming to you with my Caritathon vlog. And so this is a readathon that is running throughout this week, I believe from the 7th to the 14th, the 15th, whichever day Sunday is this week. Uh, and so this is a really short readathon, but it's themed around reading um, Korean literature and just kind of celebrating Korean culture, I think. And so I think it's just going to be a really fun week. But before we get into the books that I am planning on reading, really excitingly in this video, I am getting to work with a partner for the first time since I've had my channel. And so this is really, really exciting for me. And today I am working with Ana Luisa, which is a fine jewelry company that I have really been intrigued by for a very long time, and I have been wanting to try them for a very long time. Uh, so I'm really excited that they decided to reach out to me and that they wanted to collab with me. I've really been interested in them over the years because uh, they strive to be 100% carbon neutral, which basically means that they strive to leave essentially no carbon footprint uh, in the making of their jewelry and also in the packaging of their jewelry, which I just think is really incredible. And I really admire that as a company, uh, protecting the environment is something that they have built into their ethics and into their ethos. Even the packaging that the jewelry came in is sustainable, which I just think is incredible and is also really, really cute. So they sent me three pieces to try, which is really exciting. So I got these earrings. These are just called the Duo. So they're kind of two little interlocking gold hoops. And y'all may have noticed this about me by this point. You probably do know that I am absolutely an earring person. Earrings are my favorite jewelry items. I think all of the pieces I have on today are, are 24 karat gold over sterling silver. Uh, so this is really nice on my ear as well as just being really, really cute. I also got this lovely ring. This is the Cody and I just love it. It looks a little bit like a signet ring kind of, but it's flat on the top and I just really adore it. It was really hard to choose pieces because all of their rings were really gorgeous to me. A lot of their rings are, are quite dainty, but they really also look very high end. So I was really hard pressed <laughs> to choose which ring I wanted, but I'm really happy with this one. I just think it's so pretty how it shines. The gold is also just a really gorgeous color as well. And then last but not least, I got this necklace, which is, I think, my favorite piece that they sent me. It's called the Mish and I love this stone. I have no clue what this stone is called. I need to do some more research on it, but I love that it's kind of between green and blue, uh, which is very much my aesthetic kind of going into the summer. Uh, so I really, really love this piece and I love the chain as well. I'm really excited that I wound up getting a ring, a necklace and earrings because it feels like I kind of got a full set on. But uh, if you, like me, have always been curious about Ana Luisa, they are running a sale right now and it's 20% off their entire website. Their pieces start at $39, so they're also a really affordable jewelry company uh, on top of being so sustainable, which I just really admire. Uh, so I also have a code for y'all to use that I will link in the description box below. It's a great time of year to get on their site and look around because I really do think a lot of their pieces just look incredible for the spring and summer that we're going into. I really love gold in the spring and summer. Uh, so I will link to that down below. And thank you again to Ana Luisa for reaching out to work with me. Now let's get into the books that I'm gonna read. I've cheated and I've started a book. So I'm kind of wondering if I should add in something else. It is only a week long readathon. Uh, me and Christy Lewis, I think are gonna be watching this virtually on Saturday. And we're planning on kind of finishing off the readathon with a bit of a 24 hour readathon that's gonna be very, very loose. <laughs> uh, we're just gonna kind of keep each other accountable because we are trying to read a book together, which I didn't bring down here. It's 1Q84, which I have not started. And so I'm debating whether or not I just wanna wait and start that on Saturday when I know that I'm gonna be reading with her anyway. But so I've kind of cheated because I've already started um, one of the books. So one of the books that I mentioned in my TBR video that I wanted to read was Kim Ji Young, Born 1982 by Cho Nam Ju. And this is a feminist book has kind of taken Korea by storm. It is very, very short. I have the sense that I'm probably gonna finish it today just because I think I have less than 50 pages left. It's 150 pages. Uh, and this is really 
just talking about the hardship that women have gone through in Korea. I won't say that I'm enjoying it. I don't think it's a book that's meant to be enjoyed, first of all. But second of all, I don't really think it's hit for me the way some other books have. I think in many ways, if you are a woman when you read this, a lot of the experiences of the main character will feel very relatable to you. Uh, definitely some of the things are universal. All women have experienced them. What I have found fascinating have been kind of the Korea specific instances of sexism that I have never really considered before. And you don't just have to take the author's word for it. She has sourced articles. Many of the pages have footnotes at the bottom where she has put articles where she got information, where she got the statistics that she quotes on the page. This covers a lot of prompts for the co read -thon. One of the prompts is to read an award-winning Korean novel. This has won many awards. Uh, one prompt is to read a book that has been translated from Korean. So this book is doing a lot of work for me, and it's also the shortest book on my TBR, so I'm very happy with that. I don't know what I'm going to rate it. It doesn't feel like a book that you were meant to go, wow, this was riveting. It was meant to make you think and it was meant to make you consider things, but it's really been very, very shocking to me, some of what Korean women have had to deal with. And it's not stuff that happened 50 years ago. This is stuff that was happening in the 90s, in the early 2000s. And I think it's very, very hard to believe. I think many of us think, wow, we've moved past it. We don't need feminism anymore. Not true. It's certainly not true in Korea. It's certainly not true here in the United States. And I imagine it's not true uh, in most countries of the world. So I can see why this set people off. And I can also see why it is a book that is regularly recommended by K-pop idols. That's another prompt for the Korea thon is to read a book recommended by a Korean celebrity. This is really, really popular, not only with female K-pop idols, but with male K-pop idols, which I just think is really, really interesting. Uh, so this was adapted into a film. One of the prompts for Koreatathon is to watch something uh, that was made in Korea. And so maybe I will watch the film because I know Gong Yoo is in it. And <laughs> I just think he's very, very handsome. But I'm interested to see the film because it doesn't feel like there is a lot here that makes sense for it to be a film. It covers such a wide swath of time, not only of Kim Ji Young, but also of her mother, of her husband's mother. It really ties in the experiences of a bunch of different women. It's a very, very interesting book. And I think it would be more interesting to discuss it with someone than just to read it on your own. That's my personal opinion anyway. I think this would be an amazing book to do a group read with or to go to a book club and discuss, but I just don't know right now uh, where this is going to fall for me. I do think it's very interesting and I love the fact that she has included actual statistics and she has quoted from articles and books. So on the one hand, I'm really enjoying this. On the other, I don't really know how I feel about it. 1Q84 is also on my TBR. It is for the prompt uh, to read a book recommended by a Korean celebrity because I am working my way through RM from BTS's reading list and there's a lot of Haruki Murakami on his list. That's the one that I chose to go with and I'm going to be buddy reading that with Christy Lewis and she is way way past me. She is in the third book. So she has almost finished it but that's also one of my picks for March of the Mammoth this year. So I would like to get started on that soon. And maybe I'll start it today after I finish Kim Ji Young. I don't know. But one of the other books that I mentioned in my TBR video is Please Look After Mom by Kyung Suk Shen. And I've started this and I've already kind of DNF'd it. It's very strangely choppily written. I'm not talking about the fact that it's written in second person. That doesn't bother me. I've read and imagined or two in my day, okay? I've been in the fan fiction world. I know about second person. And I actually really enjoy it and I find it very, very refreshing. That's not what bothers me. It's how the rest of the book is written. It feels very choppy. I just think there's something very odd about the choices and sentence structure and everything. It's just a very weirdly written book aside from it being second person. I wanna continue on with this because I've heard a lot of people say it's just an emotional gut punch. So for the time being, I've set this down. I do want to come back to it this week because it is kind of high on my TBR, but I'm about 50 pages in and I just am having a really difficult time with it. 
The last book that I mentioned in my TBR video is a book that I plan on filming an entire separate blog about, and that's The Republic by Plato. This I am reading for the prompt of a book that was recommended by a Korean celebrity, and this was recommended by Taemin, who is an incredible uh, K-pop idol. Taemin is in the group Shiny. He's in Super M and he's also been solo and I love his solo work so much. And Plato apparently is something that really inspired him in one of his videos and actually in some of his solo work, like I think his first two albums are connected to ideas that Plato is talking about. I don't know that he really agrees with Plato. So I'm excited to get into this, but I am really, really intimidated by it. I've started the introduction and I was like, this is a 50 page introduction. I'm just not reading it. I'm going straight into the text. I don't need this 50 page introduction. I started reading the first two pages and I said, actually, <laughs> I think I do need the 50 page introduction. So this is probably not gonna get finished this week. And I don't necessarily know that I'm going to really even get very far into it this week. But I would really like to start it. If it's just the introduction, that's fine. I need to take some notes on this before I get into it so that I can go into this kind of having some background knowledge, not only about Plato, but also about why Taemin was inspired by Plato. One of you guys recommended Taemin to me when you heard that I was into K-pop. And I just would like to say once more, Thank you, because Taemin is potentially, uh, he's potentially my favorite idol in K-pop. He's definitely in my top three. I think my favorite K-pop idol is Baekhyun from EXO. But Taemin, definitely top three for me. So this is one that I'm hoping to start this week. Probably won't get finished. So since I'm almost finished with Kim Ji Young, and also because I kind of DNF'd Please Look After Mom already, I wanted to throw another book into the midst. So one of the prompts that I didn't have a book selected for was to read historical fiction. And so is it time to pick up Pachinko? It might be. I really want to read this before the show comes out. I don't have Apple TV, but I will be getting it to watch this show because I think it looks incredible and I love the entire cast of Pachinko. So I'm just really excited about it. But this is historical fiction that is also kind of a family saga. And I had heard nothing but good things about this. And then I think it was last week, Jen from Insert Literary Pun here rated it really low on Goodreads or something. And I thought, oh dear, if she didn't like this, I might not like it. So it's also really big. I don't know that I'm gonna have time to devote to a really big book when 1Q84 is on my TBR, but I'm also not planning on finishing that this week by any stretch of the imagination. So I would like to get this started because I know the show is coming out very, very soon. Uh, and I think I just need some historical fiction. I've been craving some historical fiction lately. And listen to the first line of this. This is incredible. History has failed us, but no matter. I love it. It's just really cheeky right out of the gate. Uh, so I'm looking forward to this. I don't know that I'll pick it up this week though, but my other option that I wanted to throw in was a book that I pre-ordered and it's called The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea by Axie O. Oh. And this is a retelling of a Korean myth by a Korean American author, I believe. And so I don't know whether this fulfills any of the prompts. Uh, it's just been one that I'm really intrigued by and I think the cover of this is stunning. I mean, look at it. It's just gorgeous. I cannot believe. Look at this and look at him up here. I almost didn't notice him at first. That's just so beautiful. And look at the back. I'm really encouraged though, because on the back here, Juliet Morellier blurbed this. So I'm excited. Uh, this I was gonna hold off on. I pre-ordered it, but I really intended to keep this for when I go to the beach next because it is about a girl falling beneath the sea and the god of the sea, I believe, and people being sacrificed to the god of the sea to save uh, their city, to save their island, maybe. And so I don't know very much about it, and I want to keep it that way. I know this is a retelling of a Korean myth, but I'm not really familiar with the original myth, so I think this will be really fun for me. And so maybe I will pick this up. I do think I need a lighter read amidst all of this other heavier stuff that I'm going to be reading this week. I have a lot of plans for this week. I'm really excited about it. One of the prompts is to cook something Korean. 
<laughs> that I don't know about because really all I can find in terms of Korean recipes um, have been a lot of meat recipes and I'm essentially vegetarian so I am not going to be making anything with meat. I guess I can make ramen. I just feel like that's a cop-out though. So I wanted to find something. I did find an interesting Korean um, cucumber salad which sounds amazing. So I don't know what I'm going to do for that prompt. For the other prompt of watching something made in Korea, um, I'm currently watching a K-drama on Netflix that I guess I'm not really going to call a K-drama. It's called All of Us Are Dead and it's about a zombie outbreak, which I really enjoy stuff about zombies. So I'm really enjoying the show so far, but I'm on the fifth episode. I'm about to start the fifth episode and I'm so mad right now. I've not been able to think straight since last night when I finished the fourth episode. I, my heart was just racing and I needed to turn it off and go to bed and try to calm down. I had to read to calm down before going to bed because it really had me infuriated. Um, I think my two favorite characters have been killed in episode three and episode four. So I don't really know how much farther I'll get with it because I don't really like anybody else but them. So that's been really good. So those are some of my plans. Uh, so I'm planning on getting started on some of these books and I'm planning on reading a lot this week, just really getting involved in Korean media. I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, normally I hate this time of year because I really hate the second that it starts to get warmer. But even I'm even I'm feeling a little bit happier now that I'm seeing the sun a little bit more. So maybe i'm just really ready for a spring readathon spring reading spring cooking i'm just really excited about this week in this readathon so i will talk to you again later hopefully when i have finished kim ji young So it is time for a Koreatathon update. Uh, it is now Wednesday, so I guess technically we are halfway through the readathon, and I fully intended to update you earlier because I did finish Kim Ji Young, and I think I finished that Sunday, so I finished it really, really quickly. I don't want to say I enjoyed it. It really was very, very short. I think it was under 150 pages or it was just around there. And part of me when I first started reading it really just thought it should have been a nonfiction article, maybe an essay. I think that probably also would have served its purpose. But as I got towards the end and as everything built and was really making me as a reader incredibly infuriated, me as a woman uh, incredibly infuriated, I understood why the author chose to structure the book that way. And I think it was very, very smartly done. I also understand why it has taken off and why it has become such a phenomenon in Korea. What was shocking to me was the Korean specific elements of sexism that are just kind of baked into Korean culture, which I thought was really fascinating. And those were the parts of it that really got me angry. And you know, everyday regular sexism also gets me really angry. And it was really hard to just read a book that was purely about that experience, purely about 
how women are treated as other, as lesser, as objects of sexual desire and nothing more. It was really frustrating to read a book where that was the entire point. And even men in the book that you had a respect for or you thought were being a good person were also displaying elements of sexism. Whether they knew it or not, it was very present on the page just how much of it is internalized, internalized sexism. And so I just think the book was incredibly brilliant. I rated it four stars. I'm going to automatically go on and pass it on to other people. I think this is one that I just want to automatically give away. I really want this to wind up in the right person's hands because I really think it was quite revolutionary. Uh, so I see why it has hit such a mark in Korea specifically and why it has broken out of Korea, why it's become an international bestseller and also an award winner. It was just really amazing to see it put so bluntly on the page. Like I've seen these conversations happen before and they're done much more subtly. This book is not subtle and I really, really appreciated it. Uh, so, so much of it was relatable just to what I would call the female experience, uh, the woman's experience, but a lot of it was also so interesting because I learned quite a bit about how Korea has structured uh, just gender in their society, what the expectations are for men and for women. I think this was a really interesting one and I think it really would have benefited from being discussed in a group setting. I think this would be a great book club read. But after that, I decided to pick up The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea, kind of as a lighter read uh, during the week here. And I'm over halfway through it and I'm just loving this. I fell in love with it instantly. And my love for it has kind of waned as we get towards the middle of the book as now I feel like it's kind of tedious. It's kind of just treading water, doing the same thing over and over and over again. It is a YA book and I do sometimes have to remind myself that there are aspects of YA, like how it is structured, that sometimes don't work for me. And there are parts of that not working for me in this book, if that makes sense. We just kind of have a constant cyclical nature here and the center of the book where it feels like we are doing the same thing multiple different times, just in slightly different ways. But I don't care because I just love the character so much. I love our main character, Mina. I love a character called Shin. I am a little bit in love with a character called Shen. I think the cover would lead you to believe that this is a very lyrically written book. I don't find that to be the case so much, but I am really enjoying it and I do like the way it's written. I think it is paced very, very strangely though. I think it was very, very fast paced at the start of the book. In fact, maybe the whole book has just been really fast paced in that we don't have time for real character moments. We're just kind of moving through the action very quickly. And it actually, weirdly enough, is not bothering me. Normally, I prefer a fantasy book to be slower, but I think since I am still trying to come out of a reading slump, this is probably the pace of something that I need. I probably need something very, very pacey. And so this, I think, has been really helpful to me because it's the first time this year that I can recall reading during a weekday, reading on a weekday. Uh, so that's a complete success to me. And I am just really enjoying this. I'll probably finish it very, very soon. So hopefully this one will be finished in the next day or two. And then I think, I really think I'm going to, I think I'm going to throw pachinko into the ring. I kind of think I have to. I've seen a lot of people mention it this year for the Koreatathon and it feels like maybe it's time for me to pick it up, but uh, I do have an audiobook of 1Q84, so I might put that on while I am crafting tonight or tomorrow and try to get into it, uh, try to just feel it out, get it started, because I think it's going to have a pretty slow start, it seems like people have said. Uh, so I do need to get started on that one for one of my other prompts, but I am loving this. This was definitely something that I really, really needed. So you saw that I made my Korean cucumber salad. It was really good. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Update on what I'm watching for watching a Korean film or TV series. I'm still watching All of Us Are Dead. And 
I think I said in my first update that I was really concerned that they had killed my two favorite characters right after each other, episode back to back. And they didn't kill one of them. So I, I was able to breathe. Like I literally was so stressed about that. I thought about the poor guy all day. Uh, and so he didn't die. I really want to say his name, but I don't, I don't want to spoil anything if you want to watch it. The show is ridiculous. Like, first of all, do I recommend it? Probably not, <laughs> but I can't look away. Like I can't stop watching it. It's not very well written in my opinion because every character just makes completely foolish decisions and is just weird to each other. Everyone is basically unlikable. And the only reason I say I have a favorite character is because I automatically liked this poor boy. Um, and so I am like a duck on TV shows. This sounds so weird, but I am like a duck in that I imprint automatically on the first person that I like. And then you become my favorite. And I just have to go with you throughout the show. And that's what's happened for me with this boy. I think he has made incredibly poor, stupid decisions. I don't understand what's going through his mind 90% of the time, but I still love him. He's still my favorite. I have to watch the show to make sure that he doesn't die. I'm pretty sure that he will. I'm pretty sure that he will, but that's me. I really can pick them. So those are my updates for now. I'll probably update you maybe Friday. I think I might include Saturday on this vlog. I thought I wasn't going to vlog the whole week, but I really thought I was going to update prior to now. So I will update you again. Hopefully I will have finished All of Us Are Dead because the last season of The Last Kingdom came out today and I need to see my man Uhtred. I mean, really, I do. But uh, that's all for me right now. I'll talk to you later. Good morning, or actually afternoon, <laughs> because uh, it is Saturday. So today is actually my kind of impromptu 24-hour readathon with Christy Lewis. Uh, and thus far, it is now 2 o'clock my time and 11 a.m. her time. And really, basically no reading has gotten done. It has not really been a readathon. It has been a chatathon, which... I think both of us knew was probably coming. I think the last time I updated you was Wednesday and I did in fact finish The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea and I wound up reading it three stars. I started out really loving it and I was just instantly obsessed and then I think it just started getting kind of plodding there towards the middle and ultimately there at the end I just didn't care anymore. I was no longer really invested in the book. I won't say I disliked it. I really did like it but I thought there were some weird pacing issues. I think it moved very, very quickly and had it moved a little bit slower, I probably would have rated it higher because I think it would have given more time for me to really get invested in the characters and in the plot. But I think the paciness of it is what kept me reading and really helped keep me invested in the story. So that's success. Definitely have finished two books. I have started Plato. That's going into another vlog, an entirely separate Plato Tamen vlog. But uh, today the goal is to make some good progress on 1Q84. I started reading that, just reading it with my eyes, and I wasn't really vibing with it. Christy just told me when we got off of our Zoom call uh, to try the audiobook that she much prefers the audio to just reading it physically. So I think that's the way that I'm going to go. Uh, and then I'm also planning on starting Pachinko. So I will let you know how that goes. That's my goal for uh, the afternoon. We are going to check in and have another Zoom call around 7 o'clock tonight.
So I'm updating you from our next Zoom spot, which is just kind of relaxing, lounging in bed, uh, because this is our last hurrah. This is the end of the 24 hour readathon. Uh, I know I'm tired and I know Christy's tired, and yet I don't really think that much reading has gotten done for either one of us because things came up throughout the day that we were not expecting and that we were not intending. I split time this afternoon and I tried to do a little bit of physical reading and a little bit of audiobook reading, but I didn't really wind up doing much physical reading. I was going to pick up Pachinko. I read the first chapter and then I just decided that I really wanted to craft, which is kind of now my Saturday tradition. And so I decided to film a little bit of what I did, one of the pages I did and uh, to show it to y'all. And while I was doing that, I was listening to the audiobook of 1Q84 that Christy very kindly sent to me uh, a few weeks ago. And so I got this far in, which, you know, really doesn't look like much, but feels like I am very, very far into it. It feels like it's just been an exhausting day. I think largely because this has been the book that I have been reading. I am six hours into the audiobook. I think the audiobook is something like 47 hours. I'm not exaggerating. Uh, and I was really struggling when I started this morning. Christy and I did a couple of reading sprints and I was trying to read this physically and I just was really struggling with it. I felt like it was really repetitive and I felt like it was really, really wordy. And she said she felt the same way, especially when she was reading it physically. So she recommended just basically entirely switching to the audiobook. And so I decided to do that. I thought it would be a good idea anyway. I've been meaning to pick up an audiobook to kind of listen to while I'm crafting, while I'm getting my desk area all put together because that's a never ending saga. So I thought this would be the best of both worlds. I knew I would only start this in this readathon. I never intended to finish it this week uh, because the readathon ends tomorrow and honey, this is not happening. I don't even think the first book of this, this is technically three books in one. I don't even think the first book of this will be finished. In truth, I don't even know what to tell you this book is about. I am about 200 pages in or 175 pages in. I don't know. I know it's about an alternate world, which is what I was really excited about. So far, there are only two perspectives. I do not like the male perspective at all, but I love the main female character. And it's an interesting thing to say because I will say my biggest complaint about this book is that I think it is quite misogynistic. And yet the female character feels as though she is the only fully rounded character in the narrative. She's certainly the only character that I care anything about, that I'm really interested in witnessing her journey. Uh, and I really like her because she's very, very smart. But her whole character arc is that she is an assassin who kills men. And I think specifically she kills men who have been abusive towards women. And so her whole storyline is interesting to me without it being in an alternate world. But she is somebody who's automatically picked up on the fact that things are different. And so I really like that. The male character just frustrates me and I get the sense that he is going to embark on a weird relationship with a much younger woman. In fact, a, a girl who is still in high school. That is really weirdly the tone to their relationship. I don't even know what to describe him as. He technically works in the publishing world. I don't think it is badly written. I personally just think it should have been edited more. To only be 200 pages in, I'm telling you, there have been two or three things that have happened that I think we needed explanation for. 200 pages and really nothing has happened. And in another book, like just take Pachinko, for example, I think this might be 500 pages. Maybe not. Maybe it's a little less. It is 500 pages. 200 pages of this, I would be reaching the halfway point. So even in a book that is a thousand pages, by the 200 page mark, I should feel like a lot of things of import have been happening. I think you really need to justify to me the length of a thousand pages. Now I understand this is technically three books in one, but Christy is way far ahead of me. She's almost on book three and I asked her, did she feel as though this was written as a series that they just bound up or were you always intended to read these one after the other? And she thinks one after the other entirely. You really have to justify 
your length to me. And this is not the only book that I'm reading this month that is over a thousand pages. I'm reading The Decameron quite slowly for March of the Mammoths, and it has really already justified its length to me. I don't have a problem with the fact that the Decameron is over a thousand pages long. Now it's doing something very different, of course, but it doesn't really feel like a long book. 200 pages in, I already feel like this book is getting tedious and I really just don't like it. I don't really think the book is for me. I'm gonna go on and be honest and say that. I don't know if my opinion on this will change the further that I get into the book, but right now I'm really struggling with it. But the funny thing is I have listened to it clearly for the six hours of the audiobook. Now I listen at over two times speed. So I've maybe listened to three hours of it. That's a long time for me, especially when I'm not really a big audiobook fan. Uh, so I am really compelled to keep picking it up. I do really very much want to figure out what is going on in this book. And especially the main female character, Almame, I'm really invested in her. So it's interesting. It's like 50% of the book, I don't really care. And 50% of the book, I'm really invested. I don't know what the overarching plot here is. I don't know how these two characters are going to converge. I don't have any ideas about that. And you know, the weird thing is I don't really care. I'm not invested enough to care about that. I feel like by this point I should be thinking, oh wow, I'm so excited about all of this that they've set up. And that's not really happened for me. So I don't really, know what to say. There's also just so much weird sexual stuff that honestly, I thought about DNFing it really earlier in the day. Just for the day, I just thought for a 24 hour readathon, should I be really bogged down in a book that I am not liking and just move to Pachinko and just sit there and read Pachinko. But there are elements of it that just keep me very interested. So I'm not going to DNF it. I'm going to give it until maybe the midway point, but this is going to take me a really long time to read. It also may not be finished in the month of March, but again, that's okay. But before I go, I meant to tell you, I meant to tell y'all, I finished All of Us Are Dead. And maybe you can tell just from my attitude that yeah, they they killed my favorite character and I knew it was going to come. And you know, part of me watching a zombie show wants that to happen. I really think the stakes should be high in zombie film and uh, TV and anybody should be at risk. I, I don't know. Actually, I still have faith that my favorite character is still alive, but what gets me, what gets me is that they, it was how it was done. It was just how it was done. I just felt so, I don't know. I, I just don't have, have words for it. I'm still thinking about him. Like I've thought about him consistently all day ever since I watched the end of it. It's crazy. I just loved him so much as a character. I really get invested in a zombie story, I think, in a way that I don't with other like dystopian end of the world stuff. Like I really hone in on the characters in zombie shows and I don't know what it is. I think zombies are such an interesting metaphor. And I think specifically now that I've watched a couple of things that were zombie like from Korea, they are very interesting metaphors in Korea. Like this show did something really interesting with a character I absolutely hated. And I wanted this character to be the one that got killed, but that didn't happen. But so this whole character arc with this character was that they were one of the worst students at school and they essentially were not going to get into college. And yet throughout the show, they were the character that knew what to do in the situation in terms of maybe street smarts, let's say. So like, it was really interesting because we had a lot of intellectuals in the group, like the top of the class. They didn't have any ideas about survival, but this character did, even though they were technically one of the worst students in the class. And so it was really interesting how they paralleled street smarts versus book smarts. I think it was well done in places, but again, the characters made such stupid decisions that I really have a hard time recommending this to people. It was a lot of fun. But I'm interested to move into Kingdom Now, which is also a zombie show, but is set in the Josen Dynasty, I believe. So can't wait. I'm really excited about that. That'll be my next Korean adventure in terms of television. But right now I'm watching The Last Kingdom, the last season. 
It's so good. But anyways, that's all I have to say for right now. I will wrap up the vlog tomorrow. I'm about to get online and hopefully talk to Christy for a little while and see what progress she has made today. Well, I think I'm gonna wrap up the vlog here because I just looked at my other footage and we are once again staring down the face of a very long vlog. But today, it is Sunday. The readathon is officially over. Nothing else got read last night. Christy and I talked for a couple of hours. We didn't do any more reading sprints. Uh, and I've really gotten no reading done today. So I'm kind of disappointed that I didn't get Pachinko started at least. Uh, so one chapter in, basically, that's not even enough to say that I started it, in my opinion. But maybe I will keep it up, but I have a couple of buddy reads that I am doing this month, so I'm gonna prioritize those in this coming week anyway. But remember to check out Anna Luisa. I will have my link and my code down in the description box below, uh, so go check them out. But that's going to be all for me today. I would love to know if you participated in the Caritathon and just how your reading is going this spring, but Again, that's going to be all for me today, so I hope you're all having a great week. Happy reading. Goodbye.